If you're looking for a therapist or just started therapy, you need to know these five signs that you may have a bad therapist. So it's so important to find a great therapist because therapy is wonderful. We all need a safe place to talk about our feelings at some point in our life. And if you're looking for a therapist, what do you look for? How do you gauge it? Maybe you're new to therapy and you're not quite sure about your therapist yet. So let's look at five red flags that you may have a bad therapist. So number one is they talk more than you do. That is a huge red flag. You don't want a therapist like that. They need to have their focus on you. A the therapist is over talking you and telling you about their day, their life stories, how what you're going through ties into, well, guess what? I went through the same thing and, and they continually are bringing it back to them in some form or fashion. That is a big no-no. Some therapists wanna make it about them and they're in the wrong field because that's never going to work. And you don't wanna confuse the client by a therapist throwing in their little ad lib and what's happened to them and what worked for them and what didn't work for them because the client needs to focus on what's best for them, not what has worked or not worked for the therapist. You have very different lives. So if you have a therapist who's over talking you, talking too much, relating a lot of personal stories to you, that's time to maybe look for a new therapist. Number two is if you feel any sort of sexual advance in any shape, form, or matter from your therapist to you, that is a huge no-no. If that's ever happened or is happening now, that's unethical behavior and the therapist needs to be reported to the state boards. The therapist's main job is to provide a safe environment for you, the client. Getting involved with the client in a sexual way not only is confusing and destructive to the client in every way possible, but it erodes everything about what therapy is supposed to be about. It's about having healthy boundaries. So you need to be aware of that. And if you feel that energy, it's big red flag. You need to look for another therapist. If they've made any kind of advance whatsoever, they need to be reported. Another red flag, they are not genuinely interested in you and you don't feel like they really care about you. Now, this is a tough one because it's very subjective and the client needs to just go with their gut feeling on this one. The gut feeling is really important because it's of primary importance that they feel safe with them and they feel that there's a bond to some degree and the therapist really cares about them. That relationship, a healthy relationship between a therapist and a client is a priority. That's how wonderful work can be done over many years. So if you feel that you're just a number to them, you're just another client next, get out of the room, next client's coming in. If you feel like you're on any kind of assembly line with this, then that's a red flag that maybe you need to look for another therapist. Number four is the flip side of that, that you genuinely don't like the therapist. So a therapist may like you and they're wanting you to come in, but on some level, you just don't like them. You may feel terrified either consciously or unconsciously and then abandon the therapy. It's a way out. You find an excuse to abandon the therapy. Now that's different from what I'm saying about not liking the therapist. So again, this is very subjective and you have to be honest with yourself as to whether you're abandoning therapy because you really do like them and they're allowing you the space to go deep or you genuinely don't feel a connection with them. Time to look for another therapist then. And number five is a two-parter. If they're not licensed and or too focused on payment from you, then that's a red flag. They need to be licensed so you know they meet the criteria in whatever country or state you're in to provide the basic level of care. That they are meeting some sort of standard that they have earned a license and therefore they have earned a place to be sitting across from you and have them be your therapist. So if they haven't met that standard of care, then that's a red flag. They need to be licensed. And the second part of this is if and or they're too focused on payment from you. So yes, we have to make a living. I, I make my living from my clients, absolutely. But it goes back to what I brought up earlier about the primary goal here is the relationship between the two of you that you feel connected in a way that you feel safe to be with this therapist long-term to open up if you need long-term therapy. And if you're sensing an exaggerated concern about the therapist getting payment from you, kind of a red flag. Again, it's gray area, but therapy needs to be discussed as a gray area area because it is a gray area. It's a very unique field. It's about the relationship between the client and their therapist. That involves trust. That involves a deep connection. That leads to the client being able to open up and be vulnerable and share deep-rooted feelings that have been avoided. 
So we have to talk about the gray area if we're going to talk about good therapy. So I hope all these five points make sense to you. And remember that one of the most primary goals is that you feel safe and connected with your therapist. So please leave us some comments below. I'd love to hear if you're in therapy by chance, how you found your therapist, what that process was like for you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like these kind of mental health videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.